Well, after a month of December that saw most of the nation running with temperatures above normal, will that trend continue into the month of January, or will we get an invasion from the far north? I'll let you know coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski and before we get started, as always, I'd like to thank all our new subscribers. Yeah, we're continuing to grow, moving in the right direction. We're currently up to 844 subscribers and if you haven't yet subscribed, please do me a favor. Please go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content and give me a thumbs up or a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm. I usually respond to all the comments posted by folks and if you got a question or something like that, you can do that as well. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what you can expect for this episode. Here's things you need to know. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the climate outlook. We're specifically looking at what are the chances of us getting Arctic air as we go into the month of January. So we're going to look at the climate outlook that's going to finish up 2023 and going into 24. Then we're going to take a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. That's kind of a forecasting tool that kind of helps us with the position of the jet stream and what that is trending toward as we head into January and whether it lends itself to some cold air coming down. Then we're going to, going to track that Arctic air, kind of a bird's eye view from the northern hemisphere and kind of track where we're going to see a couple of cold shots coming in as we wrap up 2023 and enter January into early January. And then finally, we're going to look specifically at the 850 millibar temperature anomaly map across the continental United States as we track that cold air. And then finally, wrapping up this edition, we're going to take a look at the snow potential for January. We're expecting looks like cold air for the month but we also still have a very active subtropical jet stream. So I'm gonna kind of highlight where I believe are gonna be the best areas where you can see some snowstorms going through the month of January. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at that climate outlook. So we're gonna talk specifically about the temperatures across the United States as we're heading toward January. Now this is the six to 10 day outlook here going from about Christmas Day up until the 29th. And this has been kind of something we've seen as a broken record pretty much all month long with these above normal temperatures covering a big swath of the country uh, throughout the month of December, except for maybe the early part when it was cooler. Uh, but this trend will continue, looks like, going into the new year. Now, as I step forward here and go over into the... Uh, 8 to 14 day outlook. This goes from the 27th through January 2nd. This one, I suspect there's a potential could change because looking at the latest models, looks like we may get a cold shot to come down uh, across the eastern third of the United States going in toward the 28th and 29th. So we'll we'll see if this kind of holds right now. For currently though, it, what it's showing is we're seeing below normal temperatures really across the deep south, a very active subtropical jet stream in here uh, with cloud cover and cooler temperatures down here, the near normal, below normal, around the Gulf Coast as we head into 2024. Hard to believe, we're almost there to 2024. Now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the North Atlantic Oscillation. That's a big forecasting tool that I like to use here. It gives me a kind of idea of what the trends are with the jet stream pattern. So we're going to zoom in here once again a little bit, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this uh, to kind of get you pointed in the right direction. Now, keep in mind, when I say it's in a negative phase, that's when we get the cold shots, and when it's in a positive phase, that's when we typically see above normal temperatures. So uh, we're currently sitting, this right here is the zero line right through here. Uh, you see where we were below that line at the beginning of the month where we were seeing very cold temperatures. We're now up here and we're seeing above normal temperatures for, for majority of the country except for the fact we get these little cold shots here and there. But for the most part, most of the country has been fairly mild or above normal for this time of year. The trend line takes us downward as we go into the new year, kind of getting almost back to a neutral phase, which kind of means it can kind of go either way. It can either go with a cold shot or a warm, warm period. So I suspect as we go into the month of January, we're gonna have uh, maybe a more of a battle between the cold air and the mild air, where we're gonna see kind of an oscillation between the two throughout the month of January uh, going forward. So that's what I'm suspecting as we go into January, that we're gonna have, yes, colder temperatures, but you still may have some intermittent uh, mild periods in between as we see more Arctic air come down uh, from Canada and into the United States. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at where that Arctic air is currently sitting across the Northern Hemisphere and kind of track where we may see a couple of cold shots coming our way in the next couple of weeks. 
So we're taking an over-the-top look here of the Northern Hemisphere, kind of shooting down from the pole there. And a couple things I do want to highlight here is we've got plenty of cold air, especially across areas of Siberia here. We're not in a situation where this stuff's going to like come over the poles and drop down this way. What seems to be happening like as we head toward Christmas Day is a lot of this just is kind of funneling in across the Pacific. Of course, when the cold air gets across the Pacific, it modifies greatly as we go into the future. So as I go ahead and rotate this here through, you kind of see what I'm talking about. It kind of rotates into the into the Pacific Northern Pacific Ocean and kind of rotates into Alaska with that so uh, as we head toward Christmas Day uh, as I freeze it right there uh, you're kind of noticing how things are across the east we're fairly mild here across the east and a fairly mild Christmas is going to be ahead for a, a half the country a little cooler shot here across the inner mountain region uh, but not all that terrible now what I'm looking at right here is you notice this little bullseye right here on Christmas Day. This is going to be the first of two shots that are going to be expected to come down, at least according to the latest GFS model run here. So as I go ahead and rotate this forward here, as I go forward in the time, watch this thing drop down here. So we're talking about the 28th into the 29th, a nice cold shot coming down across the, uh, the Midwest and coming down into the Southeast and into the Northeast as we head into the 28th and 29th. And then on its heels later, we get another shot coming down as we head into the 2nd and into the 3rd of January. So that's a very cold shot there. The depth of that cold air is even thicker there. You're seeing more of that purple there and its blast coming down there. So the trend, it appears at least initially, as we're going into January, is that we got a couple of cold shots coming at least for the eastern half of the United States as we head into 2024. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at North America and look at the 850 temperature anomaly map that kind of really helps us track where that really cold air will be setting up. Now talk about a big difference from last year at this time. If you had pulled up the 850 temperature anomaly map last year, it would be almost entirely blue across most of the country. But on Christmas Day, especially half the country is looking at above normal temperatures here. Uh, with some very mild temperatures there, except for maybe the inner mountain region. You got a little bit of cool air here across the inner mountain. But as we go through time, we've got uh, two cool cold shots coming at us. One that's going to be pretty cold, and the one behind that even colder as we go into January, uh, heading toward the second and third. So as I go ahead and progress forward through time here on this loop, you can see the cold air here comes as we go into the 27th and into the 28th. So the morning of the 28th, you're getting a pretty good uh, blast of some colder air uh, coming in across the areas of the Great Lakes, coming into the southeast with below normal temperatures there, a little bit milder, obviously, out into the west. So that's cold blast number one going into the 28th and into the 29th. This is the morning of the 29th. You can see on December 29th, uh, still looking pretty cold there across areas of the southeast and parts of the Midwest and heading toward the Mid-Atlantic. Then as we go into the weekend, it begins to modify a little bit as we head toward New Year's Day. Uh, not looking too bad. Uh, the temperature anomaly is just a little bit below normal across most of the country. Uh, going into New Year's Day, not looking too bad. But then here comes the next blast coming down as we head toward January the 2nd. So this is late in the day on January 2nd. You're seeing uh, a nice little cold blast coming here into the 3rd. And this one's even uh, colder than the previous one going into the 3rd. And you also notice that we've got a below normal out here on the West Coast as well as we've got this upper level feature here, another cutoff low or upper level low coming in towards Southern California and the Southwest. Seen that a lot so far during this El Nino season. All right, with that said, let's put it all together. Let's take a look at a climate model taking us out mostly through the month of January, and then we're going to talk about where specifically we may see uh, chances of snow where this cold air may collide with some of that subtropical moisture. Now, what you're looking at here is a long-range climate forecast systems model. It goes 30 days from December the 20th through January 20th. And what this does is it kind of looks at what's been going on in the pattern, and it kind of looks at what the forecast models are trending toward to kind of extrapolate what the forecast is showing. And one thing I'm seeing as I'm looping through this, you see this, you see numerous areas of blue setting up. Those are your snow events that are happening through the time. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and freeze this. I'm not really focusing in on any specific day, but one thing that I do want to highlight here is I back this up here a little bit is you're still seeing a very active 
uh, pattern with the subtropical jet stream. So we're talking about a lot of moisture uh, riding in through this general area right through here uh, with the moisture. You've got this colder air that's kind of coming in here as well. So what I suspect is going to happen as we go through January is it's the cold air is going to be making its presence felt uh, greater as we go through the month. And where these two areas kind of collide, that's where you're going to see the snow chances erupting. So uh, again, it's all about the timing, about the moisture, when those disturbances ride out with the subtropical and when the cold air kind of goes comes southward. Again, we're kind of expecting kind of a neutral phrase that jet stream. So I want to my target zone for snow is really going to be kind of in this general area, um, maybe sneaking into North Alabama, North Georgia, uh, kind of going through this area because that's where the best moisture is. And when that moisture collides with the coldest temperatures, uh, depending on how far south or north that cold air is, this is going to be my target zone for snow. So if you're in any areas there from coming out of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, southern Illinois, going into Indiana, Ohio, and, and that general area, that will be the main area, I think, for potential snow. Now, with that being said, there's always that possibility that you're going to get some sort of system that's going to track up this way where you may get a potential nor'easter. You really can't rule those out, especially this time of year. And if you get that kind of setup, then obviously you're looking at the northeast and uh, getting a better, better impact from a potential snowstorm or said blizzard uh, if you get a low pressure to kind of track up that way. So that's what we're looking at right now for January. We'll see colder temperatures. I think we're going to see some brief periods of moderation in between and greater chances for seeing a few more snowstorms, obviously, as we go through January, which was what you would expect getting into the month of January and starting 2024. All right, that's your latest look for now, your latest update. If you could please do me a favor, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, leave me a comment down below, hit that notification bell, and uh, help us continue to grow this channel. We look forward to seeing you on the next update. Until then, you guys have a safe and pleasant day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.